My sisters and brothers, let us begin as we begin all things. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always and with your spirit. As we gather here today, we do so to celebrate the fifth Sunday of Easter. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us first take a moment to call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those who you are pleased to make new and holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve a table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men filled with the spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community, so they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith in the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles, who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. Our response, Alleluia, Alleluia. Exalt, you just in the Lord. Praise from the upright is fitting. Give thanks to the Lord on the harp. With the ten-stringed lyre, chant his praises. Alleluia. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. Alleluia. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Alleluia. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. 
Beloved, come to him, a living stone, rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith. But for those without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone that will make people stumble and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me, that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these, because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Over the years, I've had a number of opportunities uh, to visit people who have either undergone uh, knee surgery or hip surgery or any kind of uh, surgery that would require rehabilitation to go in and uh, get some rehab work. And one of the things uh, that I learned early on, and I always try to share with people, is that it's important to take their pain medicine before it gets, the pain gets too bad. Because really, when the pain uh, builds up, then the medicine doesn't work as effectively. And I'm just uh, really saying the same things that the doctors are saying. Oftentimes, people want to get off pain medicine as soon as possible. And then they 
do the therapy, they do all of the exercises and, and the pain really starts to build and then really no amount of medicine is able to ease the pain. It's a reminder that you have to take the pain medicine up front and you have to just follow what the doctors are saying and follow uh, the doctor's order and therefore the therapy actually becomes uh, more effective. And that's really true with us in terms of our spiritual lives. We have to put the work in uh, early. I don't think anybody has ever, uh, who is upset, has ever calmed down because someone said, calm down. Or someone who's in the midst of a, of a worrying or kind of having panic or anxiety in their lives say, well, don't worry, don't panic. It's, it's never caused anyone to ease their sufferings. At that point, it really is too late. I mean, you, you, it's once you get into that kind of mind frame, you just have to really uh, kind of ride it out. But I think that we can do certain things ahead of time uh, that prevents us from experiencing uh, the sorrow that this world has to offer. And, and the beginning of today's gospel passage, Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. And that's something we have to take very seriously. We're in a good place when we are in a good place. We can't wait uh, for the trials and tribulations of life or times for us to have a crisis and then suddenly we're going to turn to God. Uh, God is there for us. We're not able to receive that comfort in the same way that someone who is mid-worrying is told don't worry. It doesn't, things just simply don't work that way. And so the encouragement for all of us is to really work on their spiritual lives ahead of time. And then when the inevitable sadness or sorrow takes place, we already have that well of goodwill. We already have that sense of trust in God that's already been built up. And so when life is trying to knock us down, we have a reservoir to go into. We have kind of uh, the peace that's saved up in a bank almost where we can draw uh, from it. And I think as we come here today, we do so knowing that Jesus doesn't want us to fear. God doesn't want us living uh, in anxiety. As a matter of fact, I was at a religious bookstore recently and there was a sign there. Nowhere in the Bible does it say, have fear, be anxious, worry. It's rather Jesus comes to say, peace be with you, fear not. Uh, you walk in the shadow, uh, even though you walk in the shadow of death, the presence of God is there. And so we come here during this fifth week of Easter, and we remember the sacrifice that Jesus uh, made for us by his death on the cross, so that one day we may have everlasting life. We know that God's love for us knows no bounds. We know that God's love is about God and not about us. And so therefore, if we build up and trust in God's love, we can get through any time of trial, through any tribulation. God truly wants us to have his peace in our hearts. And so my sisters and brothers, now as a family of faith, we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, who is crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I invite us now to bring forth our prayers and petitions. For the church on earth, may Jesus our Savior keep us faithful and lead us in the way of truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community of faith, may the Holy Spirit guide us in using the gifts God has given us to build up the kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer injustice and violence, and for those who work to promote peace, that all may be sustained by the presence and action of Christ in their midst, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are ill and struggling with their pain, may God's grace bring them comfort and relief, especially for Phoebe Nibs, Doton Oyadijo, Rita Sullivan, Leo Compion, Kathy McLaughlin, Dan Lynch, Gusta Gustave, Judy Beamster, Judah Hartle, Judy Rahm, Jordan Schwarzina, Carol Cunningham, Dolores Salas, Kate Cleary, Max Hole, Jesse Augusta, Carolyn Schwarzina, George Hoagland, Roger Cassis Sr., Mike Heaney, John Herndobler, Mike Engel, Eva Kelly, Mackenzie Pollock, Caitlin Tice, Ruben Jarragay, Matt Taylor, John J. Hiller Jr., Gwen Henderson, and Megan Rhodes. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in faith, may they rejoice with the angels and saints in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our, our prayer. For the intentions we make now, especially for Bernie McGrain, Michael Iben, Richard Sweetser, and Sue Ann Flanagan, we, uh, uh, Joy Kukler, Dan Leahy, and Sue Ann Flanagan, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. Loving God, we ask you to hear the prayers of your faithful, wherever they may be. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, but through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, but through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, through the vine and work of human hands, will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O God, who by this wonderful exchange, effected in this sacrifice, have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant we pray that we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. At all times we will claim you, O Lord when this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, for with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, 
and the integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You're indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, all the bishops, the clergy, the religious, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And so at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, 
Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us extend to each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. My sisters and brothers, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Graciously be present to our people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God descend his blessing upon you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go in peace and love to serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God.